Winston Churchill once said that we shape buildings and then they shape us. And what better place than Bay City with this palette of rich architecture. Well, this is what we call our neighborhood revitalization project. This is a way to strengthen the neighborhoods that we have in this community that have been let slide a little bit. Uh, we've read about this project in the paper and we kind of got a team together. We're going to have uh, probably 500 volunteers. We can change the whole complexion of a neighborhood. These houses have been here probably since the late 1800s, early 1900s, so they do need a lot of TLC. They've made a sidewalk for me. The, the, the driveway's being done. Things we've been praying for and didn't know how it was going to happen. We're getting two churches, ten houses painted, uh, a lot of trees, a lot of landscaping being done. We've been here since Monday, digging, sorting, and planting. <laughs> so many people gave so much to have these houses stay for all these years. It increases property value, but it also increases pride. It increases the stability in the neighborhood. It's infectious when everybody sees what's happening. A couple of years ago, I was sitting in the parlor here looking across the street at a house that was abandoned, fine old mansion. I worried about the impact of this house going to sea. I started by writing a plan, really, for how the economics of rehabbing old houses would work. Uh, we're uh, tearing off the old roofing material, resheeting the uh, the boards, and uh, so we're getting more and more volunteers just uh, after watching for a day or two, and uh, it's kind of nice. Our development efforts here in Bay City run through our architecture, and we've decided to name our effort the uh, Front Porch Renaissance Group. The Front Porch Renaissance does say it all. It's the rebirth of the Front Porch Society. Living, socializing, engaging one another, it starts at the Front Porch. Well, we have uh, currently uh, 15 uh, residential properties that we're working on, and we have a half dozen commercial properties. And I've selected pretty much the east side of Bay City as the target. Many would say as the hood. This neighborhood has a mixture of extremely wealthy and extremely poor within blocks or streets from each other. But it's to redevelop the historic properties in a way that they all gain property value at the same time. And we can do that through education, the arts. I made it my policy to assemble a team of workers that are in the neighborhoods that we're, we're working in. Which are people that are local that are being trained how to renovate homes properly. Not fly by night, but do a real good job. I purchased three commercial properties, a church, a warehouse building, and a school. It was built in 1886. It is one of the most beautiful buildings in the city. It's going to take a little care, a great deal of investment. That neighborhood needs to be converted to an arts district. The artists will do their work and be able to sell their wares out of their house. We could easily be the most attractive community within the Tri-Cities based on our, our location of the water and the coolness of our downtowns. Within 20 miles of Bay City, there is an enormous uh, amount of investment in the alternative energy fields with Dow. They're bringing in uh, solar, they're bringing in battery technology, there's a lot of jobs going to be there. The new Chevy Volt plant. Billions of dollars of investment coming to this region. So for anybody to say there's nothing going on in Bay City, they're dead wrong. Uh, urban planners today are actually designing what Bay City is. It's all here. All it needs is restoration. It's, it's not a fake community. Having an opportunity to take your kids to the greatest level of education is every parent's dream. We've developed a school model that's been very successful, and we're bringing that uh, highly successful educational model as the basis of our community schools that we're developing. Many of the residences that we're rehabbing will be the houses of teachers. The teachers will live among the students that they serve. Everyone walks to school. It's a slam dunk. Who would not bring their kids to an educational opportunity such as this? Fires what Mr. Ingersoll is doing. His main goal is involving the community and preserving its past. Most communities just hope for somebody to come along like Dr. Ingersoll has. Everything we do, we're trying to do synergistically. We can make this project succeed. I've, I've done this before. The acquisition investment is so low. The bureaucratic barriers are also low. We can reposition the community much more easily at this point. And Dr. Ingersoll explained it to me. It was very easy for me to see, but that's because that's what I do. I do these types of projects, but not all in one town. If they're entrepreneurs, they need to be here. If they're into the arts, they need to be here. This is the place. We've got this major economic boom coming in the region. If we don't reposition our architecture now to become the bedroom community of this Tri-Cities region, then we will have missed the major opportunity of 50 years.